folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I wanted to do this movie review for a very long time now because I just saw Jurassic World since June of this year, and I did a movie review on it back then as well, and, and in my opinion, I thought it was one of the best Jurassic Park sequels that we had to offer after all these years. And we waited a very long time to have an upcoming sequel. And I thought it was a much better sequel than Jurassic Park 3. Which, yeah, I, I really don't understand why some people did love that film. Because I know there were other people that hated it completely. And I agree with them all the way. And I know there are like maybe a few people that didn't care for Jurassic World. But that's alright because, you know, I respect their opinions. It did have some several problems with the story, but I guess I could understand. And maybe some problems with the kids, which I didn't care for in, in the Jurassic World, but that's fine. And maybe that stupid uh, Jimmy Fallon cameo in the movie. I mean, anything but that, so still. But I want to get to um, the first three Jurassic Park movies, uh, because I just had the trilogy which is right here, the, the Jurassic Park Adventure Pack that came out in 2005. It was basically a re-release of, of the first three films that's available on DVD uh, back in the early 2000s. Yeah, that has all the extras on the back. Yeah, and it has that awesome uh, digipack that we have, you know, with all the dinosaurs. Yeah, right here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> on the background, and right here, and right here, of course, you can see the the DVDs <laughs> once you open it up. Yeah, together. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah, it's a very good set. Um, I I know the 2005 edition was the, the real set though that, that just had a box set where you just open it up like um, the gate that you saw in Jurassic Park so that that was really cool but this one was just a slip cover and the digi pack right there so it doesn't have that box so basically this is just a reissue and I bought the set at Best Buy back in 2009 when they had it priced at $19.99 yeah, it was a good deal it was the same price that it got with uh, Back to the Future Trilogy, which I bought in 2006, of course. So I thought this was really cool to own Jurassic Park, um, along with its sequels. <laughs> so anyway. But I'm going to get to uh, the first movie, and I'll get to all the other sequels later on, uh, when I do my movie review of the rest. But right now, I'm going to get to Jurassic Park, which is the first movie that was based on a novel by Michael Crichton and it was directed by Steven Spielberg yep and this was one of the biggest summer blockbusters of all time back on June 11th 1993 one of the huge summer blockbuster movies of 1993 it actually made a 65 million marketing campaign yep which was 63 million of its budget alone and the movie actually grossed over $900 million. Yep, it became one of the highest grossing films worldwide. Enough to, to be well received by critics that praises the special effects as well as uh, John Williams' musical score. Yeah, very well achieved. And of course, Spielberg's direction. Yeah, because Steven Spielberg was chosen to direct this movie completely. It also won free Academy Awards, including uh, mostly from its uh, technical achievements that they had. Yep. Not to mention, it also celebrated its uh, re-release back in uh, 1994, you know, after they won the Academy Awards. Yeah, I remember seeing the re-release uh, the second time around. And they also re-released it once more for its uh, 20th anniversary by offering us the 3D version of the film and they also released it on Blu-ray 
for the very first time back in 2011 for its ultimate trilogy. Yeah. Which, that's where they had the theatrical re-release as well. And I know they also have the 3D version on Blu-ray too. It's a very well-made action-adventure fantasy that's uh, also science fiction. And I really enjoyed it because I remember I went to see this uh, for the first time since I was eight years old. Yeah. I, I saw this along with my family and we had a good time. <laughs> we sure did. It's one of the best movies that we ever saw next to all the other Steven Spielberg films such as Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and all the rest. Yeah. It spawned off two sequels, yeah, with The Lost World Jurassic Park. Yeah, once again, you know, Spielberg directed it along with the same team. And of course the dreaded third movie as I mentioned, which I didn't like which this time Joe Johnson took over for the director. But anyway, I'm going to get right to it with Jurassic Park. It stars Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum from uh, The Fly, Richard Attenborough, who's also a director and writer of other films that he'd done, but he's also a very uh, great actor. Yeah, God rest his soul. Ariana Richards, who was in movies like um, like Tremors and even the the underrated uh, Space Invaders. Yeah, I, I remember that film. Joseph Mazzello, who was from the film Radio Flyer with Elijah Wood, yeah, a film that was directed by Richard Donner. Martin Farrell, Wayne Knight. From Seinfeld, and a short-lived uh, sketch comedy from Fox called *The Edge*. Yeah, I remember that one. Samuel Jackson, Kevin Four, Miguel Sanvel, Jerry Molin, B.D. Wong, Richard Kelly, and Greg Burson. It's based on a novel by Michael Crichton, who wrote the screenplay, along with David Cope. And it's directed by Steven Spielberg. The movie begins centered on the founder and CEO of a bioengineering company called NGen, named John Hammond, who's played by Richard Amberville, who owns a wildlife theme park for cloned dinosaurs known as Jurassic Park, which is located on a tropical island called Isla Nublar. But when a park worker has been killed, by Velociraptor, the park investors have hired a lawyer named Donald Gennaro who demands that experts can visit the park and certify it as safe as possible. He invites a mathematician who's also a comic relief named Ian Malcolm who's played by Jeff Goldblum while Hammond invites a paleologist Dr. Alan Grant who's played by Sam Neill along with a pillow Bontanis, Dr. Ely Sadler. So they all arrived at Jurassic Park on a helicopter and they had spotted three Bachylosaurus and a herd of Parasauroflopus in the distance. And then when they went inside the visited center, the group learns that a, a laboratory tour that the cloning was accomplished by extracting DNA of dinosaurs from mosquitoes that's been preserved in the amber. So, and while some of the strands were incomplete, they actually used frog DNAs to fill in the gaps, which they are cloned generically as females, in order to prevent from breeding. The group has been joined by Hammond's grandchildren, Lex and Tim Murphy, who are both played by Ariana Richards and Joseph Mazzello for the brief tour of the entire park while Hammond oversees a trip from the park's control room but the tour of course does not go as simply as planned because once they spotted uh, a triceratops who was fatally ill 
Yeah, they basically got out of the electric tour vehicles, yeah, which is the Ford Explorer, and they actually spotted, at this rate, Ian Malcolm had spotted a whole pile of shit that's coming from the Triceratops. <laughs> so they tried to cure him by, uh, so as soon as the tropical storm had approaches, and most of the park's employees departed on the boat for the mainland while the visitors returned to the electric tour vehicles except for Ailey who stays with the park's veterinarian to study the triceratops you know try to help them completely but during the storm as the night falls a computer programmer named Dennis Nedry who's played by Wayne Knight who's been bribed by the corporal's rival to steal dinosaur embryos you know, by using the the shaving cream you know, to actually put all these embryos inside. And actually deactivated the park's security system, allowed him to access the embryo storage room. And when the power had been shut off, the tour vehicles become completely stuck, and the electric fences are deactivated, allowing the Tyrannosaurus Rex to escape and attack the entire group. At this rate, um, he was ready to attack on Gennaro, Lex, and Tim on the uh, the Ford Explorer, uh, right right next to uh, to Alan and Malcolm, because uh, they started using the binoculars. Uh, we saw the the cup of water where it starts banging like that, yeah, and banging until finally the the T Rex arrives just ready to attack. Grant, Lex, and Tim narrowly escape while the Tyrannosaurus once of injuring Malcolm. Once the T-Rex the tries to uh, chase Malcolm by using those flares, you know, the same way that uh, Grant was using them. And then the T-Rex winds up eating Gennaro into the bathroom. Ate him completely. So then the uh, it pushes one of the vehicles over the embankment, but meanwhile, on its way to deliver the embryos to the island docks, Nidri became lost in the dark, crashes his jeep, and yeah, as well as his glasses, and was killed by the Dilophosaurus. And therefore, Sadler assists the park's game warden, Robert Muldoon, in search for the survivors. They only found Malcolm and they put him inside the jeep only to find out that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had returned and they were chasing them around. They tried to escape in one of the vehicles but unable to decipher Nidri's code to reinactivate the security system, Hammond and the park's chief engineer Ray Arnold, who's played by Samuel Jackson, had opted to reboot the entire park system the group shut down the entire power grid and retreats to emergency bunker while Arnold heads to the maintenance shed to complete rebooting the process. But when he fails to return, Sadler and Muldoon had head to the shed as well, so they discover that there's a shutdown that they deactivated the remaining fences and released velociraptors. Which and once Madun distracts the Raptors while Sadler turns on the power back on, suddenly Madun was was attacked, and and Arnold was also being eaten by one of the Raptors, and which only left him his arm on Sadler. So then she escapes, and after that, Grant, Tim, and Lex had discovered the broken shells of the dinosaur eggs that's been hatched. And they're trying to find out that all the dinosaurs had been breeding by using a generic coding of frog DNA as we speak. You know, using all these West African burrow frogs or some sort. So then they try to go back to the visited center where the trio encounters a herd of Golemus. Then suddenly the T-Rex emerges from suddenly out of nowhere and kills one. And while Grant, Tim, and Lex had reached the visitor center, they had to uh, leave them there for a while, you know, maybe just to eat some food until suddenly they're being chased by the 
Velociraptors. Yeah, two of them. So they try to hit in right inside the kitchen, only to, to escape. And then after that, uh, the four headed to the control room where Lex restored full power, allowing the group to call for help. While trying to leave, they are already being cornered by the raptors, and they all escape when the T-Rex suddenly appears and kills both raptors completely. It, while ignoring the humans, Hammond had arrived in the jeep with Malcolm and the entire group flees together before they went on board with the helicopter to leave the island. And while Grant decided not to endorse the park completely, yeah, Hammond, of course, concurs for the whole idea. So they all left inside the helicopter, and then, you know, the movie ends. Well, all I have to say is, wow. This is without a doubt one of the most brilliant sci-fi action-adventure films of all time for its higher budget of $63 million at the most. Yep, because they hired... A master of filmmaking, Steven Spielberg, with novelist uh, Michael Crichton, as well as the team of, of a gifted special effects wizard, Stan Winston, to create the animatronics of the dinosaurs, as well as the, the CGI technology of Industrial Light and Magic. This movie really had something to go for. And yeah, it even has a wonderful score by John Williams. I could never forget all the two themes that they use. But can't help but have tears of joy coming around. And not to mention how scary and terrifying those dinosaurs were. They actually look completely real. Like they came from being extinct for over 65 million years in the making. And they knew that, that they were going to come up with a film like this, sort of in the tradition of, of Jaws and E.T., the extraterrestrial, and all these other films that they got you know, from Spielberg himself. But this one, of course, is as terrifying as ever. Yeah, I mean, given its PG-13 rating, that is. Yeah, and it's also the first film that's being encrypted by DTS Surround Sound, you know. Yeah, the digital surround sound that's been used in movie theaters. Yeah, and it was just amazing having to listen to that film. Because it was completely loud. It's hard to believe we just got into seeing one of the biggest summer blockbusters of all time. You know, earning more money than all the other films that came out that year. Yeah. Well, I had to say, though, the book was actually more terrorizing and very dark compared to the movie itself because I guess Spielberg wanted to transition the Crichton novel to become more sort of a family friendly type and I guess I could see what what he was going to go for but it still has a lot of those scenes in the movie so yes in a far stretch I think that's exactly what he wanted to do that's part of the main reason why he added the kids in the film just to make it more family friendly for everybody. I mean if you read the novel you'll know exactly what I meant. I mean it was just amazing. And uh, had a brilliant cast, a great story, awesome look of all the dinosaurs that are around. I mean we got to see the T-Rex, the Triceratops, the Gollumus, and all the rest. It's just wow. I, I never thought that they would make a movie this good after all this time and they really did it I mean, th this is one brilliant team of um, the discovery of dinosaurs that's ruling all the earth from mankind and that's what they got <laughs> but anyway uh, back to that um, I had to say um, those scenes uh, alone really got to me I mean having Having to see the scene where the T-Rex had went and attacked on, on Lex and Tim inside the Ford Explorer is what really got under my skin because I swear to God the T-Rex was as terrifying as ever before. And the, and the scene where you know, the T-Rex went after the lawyer who was in the bathroom, <laughs> you 
you know, leaving these two behind already being attacked. It's just enough to scare a lot of kids all around who actually saw this movie on the big screen, you know, back then. But, of course, there were other scenes that were definitely like this, especially the scene with the stampede of the Gomez, you know, already being chased by the T-Rex while, you know, Grant, Lex, and Tim were about to escape. You know, they're trying to get into the fence where all of a sudden, once the, the power was going to go back on, you know exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. And I know it happened to uh, Tim when, when he was trying to get out of the, uh, the fence and, and he was electrocuted. But I, I also like the cast too. Uh, Sam Neill was very good as Dr. Alan Grant, who was the leader of the pack, you know, along with uh, Laura Dern as Dr. Ailey Sadler. You know, they were a great couple together, you know, with Richard Amarbro playing John Hammond, who was the, the billionaire of um, InGen Corporation. And, and you got uh, <laughs> a mathematician named uh, Ian Malcolm, who was played by Jeff Goldblum, because yeah, cause he always comes up with all these funny dialogue, and no matter what. Um, even that moment was when he was already attacked and everything. You know, already, you know, th there was a connection between him and and John Hammond when when they were talking about uh, the parts of the Caribbean ride and and then he says his line well well at least in the parts of the Caribbean ride the parts didn't attack the tourists <laughs> yeah I, I remember that moment and um, I, I like uh, I, I thought Wayne Knight did a good job playing uh, Dennis Nitri even though he was basically you know the a programmer who basically wants to steal uh, dinosaurs embryos yeah that was his plan all of along and I, I know he had that that the computer uh, you know hacker virus uh, yeah I always remember that where they, they later used that in the, the CD-ROM game you yeah, know where, where you started hearing uh-uh-uh you didn't say the magic word <laughs> yeah um, yeah, it, it was very popular too with all the merchandising that they had when, when this movie first came out. Lots of uh, merchandising that they had for the film and for its marketing. I know McDonald's started selling all these uh, dino mills, which is very similar to the, the super-sized mills that they had, but it was even bigger. Yeah, would they have uh, large fries, large burger, and, and a large drink? It's just too bad I didn't have any of those because by that time I was just having a Happy Meal. So I know my family must have had some Dino Mills. <laughs> it's a shame. But once again, they did a good job uh, making this movie. I mean, it, for its budget, it really worked. Also, it's, it's great to see that Irana Richards and Joseph Mazzello had played uh, both uh, granddaughter and grandson of Hammond's. And I thought they were very smart together, too. You actually get Lex um, hacking the computer system in that one scene while they're trying to escape from all the raptors. Yeah, because they're trying to keep the door shut. And, uh, yeah, because you know, she was definitely an expert. And you have uh, Tim, who, who goes up uh, studying and, and talking about all the dinosaurs that he started learning you know, ever since. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the kids in the movie, too. And I admit it, they were a lot better than all the kids that we had in the sequels. Yes, and especially the black daughter in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Yeah, I have to admit that, too. I mean, they, they, they were a lot smarter compared to those kids. And I, I also like Samuel Jackson's role as Ray Arnold, who, who even says that line, Hold on to your butts while he's smoking a cigarette. Yeah, it's just sad that he got killed in the movie. Uh, once again, uh, a lot of great cast, you know, doing a lot of great uh, dialogue and and all the studying that they're discovering all these dinosaurs coming from their DNAs of, of a frog. 
So it's like, wow, who would have thought that taking a frog's DNA or simply a bird's DNA to actually restore the, all the dinosaur eggs completely? It's just amazing. But they also got that from the mosquitoes as well. So yeah. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed them. I mean, I love the dinosaurs that they had. You know, the Velociraptors, the T-Rex, the Golemus, the Triceratops, and, and all the rest. It's just, yeah, I mean, they, they were the real stars of the movie. They really are. They were the main reason what made Jurassic Park, you know, possible. And that's all it discovers. Definitely, um... A brilliant film to watch anytime. It's still one of the best films ever made that's coming from, you know, once again, director Steven Spielberg. Again. And while the sequels are not as good as the first movie, it still holds up as, as we speak. So, yeah. So, anyway, I give Jurassic Park five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.